2005 at the age of 19. Felix Hernandez entered MLB and was immediately a productive pitcher for the Seattle Mariners. He tossed 84 and a third innings, post an ERA of 2.67 and a FIP of 2.85. He didn't make his MLB debut until August 4th, otherwise he would have likely been the front runner for the American League Rookie of the Year award. In his first 12 starts that year, he threw seven or more innings 10 times with a whip of one and an ERA minus of 64. He followed that up with three reasonably decent years in 2006-2008 before going 19-5 in 2009 with a 2.49 ERA and a 3.09 FIP to finish second in the American League Cy Young voting behind Zach Greinke. In 2010, Hernandez would finally establish himself as a top MLB pitcher. He'd win the AL Cy Young, leading the league in ERA, innings pitched, and hits per nine. Hernandez would continue his dominance over the 2011-2014 seasons, finishing in the top five in Cy Young voting twice over those four seasons. In addition to this, he'd throw a perfect game on August 15, 2012 against the Tampa Bay Rays. This was only the 23rd perfect game at the time, putting Hernandez among some of the all-time greats. In the 2013 offseason, Hernandez would be rewarded by the Mariners with a seven-year, $175 million contract. 2014 would mark the seventh consecutive time that Hernandez tossed 200 innings in a season. Although 2014 was a good season for Hernandez, it was clear that he was already trying to change his pitching approach to deal with his decreasing velocity. His average fastball was 92.4 miles per hour and his changeup was 89.3, only a 3.1 mile per hour difference between the two. This is a stark contrast to 2005 when there was a 10.8 mile per hour difference. As a result, Hernandez threw his fastball only 43.4% in 2014, nearly 10% less than the year prior. He increased his changeup and curveball use, but it looks like the league was able to adjust to these by the following year. 2015 would mark the beginning of the decline for King Felix. Although he would still put up a respectable 2.7 war, and ERAs and FIP of 3.53 and 3.72 respectively, these numbers were his worst in seven seasons. At the age of 28, his F4 was the eighth highest all-time of pitchers under 29 in the modern era. This put him ahead of Hall of Famers like Greg Maddox, Tom Seaver, Fergie Jenkins, and Pedro Martinez to name a few. 2016 would be no better, as his average velocity would drop to 91.4, a nearly 5 mile an hour drop from his peak. His strikeouts dropped, his walks increased, and his FIP also went up nearly another run. To put it in perspective, his war in 2014 was third in the American League amongst pitchers, and in 2016 he was tied for 76th. Pretty terrible numbers for the fourth highest paid pitcher in the game. That offseason, Hernandez was challenged by the Seattle Mariners coaching staff to improve his conditioning and to work on his command. Whether he did or not, I'm not sure, but regardless, things would manage to get worse over the 2017 and 2018 seasons. The result would be a 0.3 war in each of those seasons and an average fastball that is now under 90 miles an hour. That performance was good for the 153rd highest pitching war in 2017, 163rd in 2018. In 2018, his whiff rate was only better than 12% of MLB pitchers and in 2019, he had the worst exit velocity against in MLB. A look at the StatCast pitch arsenal for Hernandez in 2014 and 2019 shows just how that played out. The fastball usage dropped under 10% and pretty much every pitch has decreased in quality. The curveball is generally being thrown up instead of at the bottom of the zone. This is likely because he's throwing with the same release point as before, but the decrease in velocity doesn't allow the curveball to drop as much. The changeup is more elevated than before, and the sinker is hitting more of the plate than before. If you're missing up and middle against MLB hitters, of course they're going to do damage. Seeing this, it's no surprise that Hernandez started putting up worse and worse numbers each year. Before the 2020 season, Hernandez inked a minor league deal with the Atlanta Braves, but then opted out of the season shortly after. In 2021, he signed with the Baltimore Orioles and threw a few spring training innings before opting out and sitting out the 2021 season. In 2022, Hernandez didn't sign any contract, possibly realizing that his career in MLB is finished. If this is the end, Hernandez is very unlikely to get into the Hall of Fame after seeming like a lock for a decade. It's a sad exit for one of the best pitchers of the 2000s. What do you guys think? 
Can Felix Hernandez make a comeback? After all, he is a year younger than Max Scherzer and three years younger than Justin Verlander. Does he belong in the Hall of Fame? Let me know in the comments.